you're very welcome to Confident Women Islands Woman to Woman panel discussion show with me, Roisin the Cleric. And Gladys O'Neill is first on my screen. Gladys O'Neill, as our regulars would know, is a disabilities advocate, domestic violence advocate, and a women's rights advocate. And Sorka McLaughlin, Sorka McLaughlin from, to the top of the screen, is one of the spokespeople for the Countess.ie, a women's ad advocacy group uh, for children and uh, for women's rights. And Catherine Mullohan is indeed one of the Wicklow Women for Women group, and is also so an author of her substack, which we'll talk about later on. And um, Sabina there is, Sabina is the founder of Women Are Speaking. She's also a disability advocate and a women's rights advocate. And you're all very welcome to the show. Thanks, Roshan. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. For some reason, I'm having work difficulty with my words tonight. So... This week, we are, uh, Catherine, you suggested that we um, actually do a paper review of the referendum. Mm, it's been lots of great material all week. The letters, yes, especially. Yeah. Yeah. And what is the general feeling of the, the, the mainstream media response, ladies? Well, I think they haven't had much choice but to report. I mean, the majority of the reportage has been... Um, you know, kind of on the side of the nose, certainly all the letters, almost all of the letters all week have been, uh, you know, from people who voted no. And uh, a lot of the coverage as well. I think it's been really good. But a few mm -hmm. sore losers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? I think the media were take were taking taken as much by surprise as the politicians were by the result. And they've been kind of left a bit sort of I felt they were they were like left a bit sort of blowing in the wind and that they didn't really understand the reasons behind such high no votes. Mm -hmm. So they, I think some of the commentary they've been nearly like self-analyzing on paper rather than actually mm -hmm. reporting what actually happened or what people were thinking. Yeah, and yeah, to through yeah, 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 yeah. Like they can't actually believe that this many people want to keep, you know, women and mothers in the constitution <laughs> and objected to the to 42B and, you know, that, that I genuinely could see that kind of bubble bursting in some of them and some of them just retreating. <laughs> I, I found it funny how the political parties on the opposition who are voting for a yes, yes and advocating for a yes, yes, they're all like, oh, but the wording wasn't right and that's why the no vote. And I go, but why did you advocate for this, you know? Like, what type of opposition are they, you know? It's like, oh, it's spineless. Absolutely spineless. I'm, I like, I we're politically it. homeless in this country because of them, you know? Yeah, I know I'm politically homeless. Yeah. Um, definitely. But what I found very interesting, ladies, I, I, I wonder, did you, did you notice it yourself? But I think the whole world noticed it. That as soon as it started coming, filtering through from the local count centres, the, the, the parties who so-called opposition were playing, started straight away doing the, the blame game on, on yeah. one another, attacking one another. Yeah, definitely. But I, I thought the narrative uh, that we didn't re understand what we were doing highly oh. insulting. You know, that, that people yeah. that go out and vote and make a decision in, in a inverted commas democracy are then told afterwards that you really didn't understand what you were voting for. I found that really, really yeah. disingenuous. And any, any of them, the politicians that have been saying that, um, that's a no for me for them forever. Do you know how dare they insult people? Yeah, and you the know, suggestion but, that if we didn't understand it, it's because we were stupid, not because they actually didn't come up with a coherent, yeah. understandable amendment. Yeah, yeah. amendments. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah, very insulting. And yeah. the waste of twenty three million. If and if we don't know really how much they all spent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it's like the, the blame game I'm finding quite interesting and how they underestimated the will of the people. Yeah. yeah. And how detached they were from the grassroots and the will of the people and ordinary people of, of the nation. Yeah. yeah. I don't know anyone who was, ca was canvassing, Roisin, you were on the streets and Sabrina, I know you were as well, and myself, we were talking to everybody on the street, like, and... I wasn't I was slightly surprised by the the high no no vote, but I wasn't surprised that it was a no no. Like 
like I was afraid to hope for it but at the same time when yeah. it started to come through I was like that actually reflects really clearly what we were hearing from all mm-hmm. over the country from all ages from you know men and women like everywhere rural urban mm-hmm. every single report we had from people back canvassing was like oh yeah it's a majority no it's a majority no it's a majority no and yet we were hearing oh the polls are saying it's a yes yes oh the politicians mm-hmm. are all going for yes yes they're all expecting a win it was so interesting. I felt the same, sorry, God. I was thinking, I mean, in retrospect, almost everybody I spoke to was planning on voting no, no, some yes, no. Yeah. And yet I still believed that it was all, that the yes was going to be a win. And when I did the, I did the debate with Colette Calford down in, in Waterford. And even at that, that was, you know, it, it, was, it was a big audience, mostly students. And I went down assuming that the, the yes side would win hands down. But they didn't. It was a clear win for the no side. I mean, and it was in it was about 70-30, which was actually how things played out in the end. I mean, that was the first time I thought, oh, maybe, you know, maybe maybe there is a chance. But I mean, in retrospect, the people I spoke to and the debate results really clearly reflected um, what actually happened. So I don't know why I was surprised or why. Why did we believe we were being told constantly that it was going to be a yes, yes. And we believed it, even though on um, the reality, talking to people indicated otherwise. Mm. Gladys, you wanted to come in? Yeah, I just wondered what 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 you would have, what you think, or um, use any thoughts on. Um, a lot of the dis- disability organisations were yes, yes, which is really really surprising. Mm. And now it's the backtracking and the you know the trying to explain themselves or answer you know sort of thing. Like I mean, how they could you know agree to this. And is there a feeling or the idea that they, you know, their back was to the wall about funding is that, you know, there is a, you know, a thought out there that, you know, that they were actually, you know, not to talk to their members. But, you know, if you want your funding, a kind of veiled threat, you know, if you don't do what you're told, you know. Um, I'm not so sure if that's actually true. I just wonder what you think, because I think that a lot of these places just do their own thing anyway, you know. And sort of the people on the ground are really father, you know, they're not really, you know, can you make a real decision, you know, on your own? I, I found that quite insulting, but it's a, it's mm. quite, especially in the care aspect of it, because that to me was very clear, especially as a disabled woman, very mm. clear to me that, you know, care in the family and this kind of bubble that they were trying to create. So why would disabled organisations go for that? Yeah. Just you know, Wonder what anybody thinks. And Sabina, you were Sabina, you you were, I think you must have of trod on every little road uh, in Kildare and Leapslip. <laughs> you were out every day at the train station, every day you're putting up. I'm here today, you and St. Pamela and a couple of other ladies, you were out every day canvassing. Almost, people. almost every day. Yeah. But I was I even when I wasn't out canvassing, I was canvassing within people that I met as well, like and um and I actually just talking about disabilities I was talking to a lady in in the town of Leakslip and um I was talking to her and she was saying that she has a daughter who is severely disabled mm-hmm. and she she's her main carer and this woman I'd say she was probably in her 60s like and she's still the carer of her daughter, who is now probably about, she said, I think she said who's in her 30s, probably about 35, I think she said, she said. But she said that she's still waiting for an accessible bathroom from um from um the uh from um the health health board. Then when her daughter turned 18 and um she went to go and see doctors, <laughs> the doctors were turning around and tell it saying you know, why are you coming in with her? Because she had to go in with her because the only thing she could say was mum and Barney because she had this Barney doll that she was, you know, and I really feel sorry because I actually had uh, my mom, my mom's cousin was severely disabled due to birth trauma. That's a long story. I won't get into it, but like it, it's difficult. And I've seen the difficulty that my mom's aunt went through uh, looking after after and it, and and then the the carers allowance she said it was cut in half 
when when her daughter turned 18 she goes i haven't become half a carer because my daughter has turned 18 mm -hmm. and then they were like oh we might be able to get her a job and that's why she went to go and see this doctor and the doctor wouldn't allow her mother in the room and she goes well i have to go into her room because i am her main carer mm -hmm. and um he turns around like real smarmy to her and turn around and says you know i could easily turn around and say she's she's good to sign off to fit for work and she goes well if you could find a job for my daughter off you go you tell me where she can work, you know? And this is the way these people are being treated. And I think yeah. it's absolutely disgusting. Like, like my dis I do have a disability and my disability isn't as bad. But when I was going through my court case claims and stuff like that, the doctors make you feel like pieces of shit. I'm, and, and excuse the language, but that's the way it is. And like, I really feel sorry for, for, for parents who have to deal with uh, children who are... The, the disabled in any any capacity whether it's mentally or physically you know and this is the way the doctors are and the hse are treating people like and then the government is trying to gaslight us into a yes vote that they'll provide more funding i go you should be riding funding before this referendum why mm. didn't you use that 20 23 million on providing services for that poor woman you know it wouldn't cost that much <clears throat> excuse me to yeah. provide an accessible bathroom for that lady, yeah. you know, with yeah. voice access, because she told me she had to physically get into the bathtub to lift her out, you know. Where has humanity gone? Yeah. Where has humanity gone? Yeah. Within yeah. society. Yeah. Never mind, you know, even the different departments. Mm. Yeah. I know what, what got for me was, um, I, I was, I, since I was divorced, my divorce, separating divorce since my children were six and two, was you know after the day we did the silent protest i don't think i think i, I was the only one there i, I don't know and he, from here and at the silent protest then i came home from the news i came home the next day it was all up that there was a um a, a, a lone parent was putting foot front of the camera oh my son came home yesterday from school and says mommy we're not a family because you're a lone parent and i thought what a load of wobble gobble gob, you know. Mm. Um, and that is, but you see, that's the societal bias. There is more societal bias, and coming it's, for me as a lone parent, it came from the educational, it came from the schools, it came from the school gate, it came from my children not going to parties because they came from a dysfunctional uh, lone parent, you know, yeah. <laughs> and. I'm seeing now that that's really it. They're all going, okay, what's happening? Where do we go? From people, from even from women who want to work, from some stay at home moms, from moms that want to work part time and be at home for the children, from moms who want a career, and from women like you, Catherine, who give up their career and also to homeschool your children. I think we should do a program on homeschooling. I think that should be in the next couple of weeks, homeschooling, because more and more people are going now to homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And you, yeah. oh, I actually think you, Catherine, what else you have for Sork in common with Sorka? You're both nurses, former nurses. Oh, oh, yeah. a nurse as well. well. A lifetime ago. I mean, <laughs> I, gave, I gave up, my son is 18 now. I haven't worked, I haven't worked nursing since he was born. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm a, I was a midwife for, um, but I think it's about ten, well, it's eight years since I practiced midwifery. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. One, one, as long as you keep up your membership. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, every year I'm like, Ooh, what should I do? <laughs> yeah. no. I'm going to do. I'm going to share some of yeah. Catherine's yeah. um Catherine's articles, and, and we can talk about that. Catherine, yeah. you might talk us through what you thought was interesting, and then if, when Catherine's finished, now they're coming from. I'm gonna just so keep talking what you about. Do you know what I loved, ladies? And why you why why I'm getting this ready, ladies? If you can sort of keep the chat going, I loved. I don't read. Uh, I don't watch mainstream media. I know I was a, a radio presenter. Everybody knows, but I stopped watching mainstream m media and uh, listening to the radio um a good few years ago, and uh so that's what so I what I loved though was when everybody was putting in all the uh letters to the um Irish Times. Mm -hmm. That to me was what really made the um the the, the media for me it was the ordinary people writing into the and uh the Sunday Times and the Daily uh the Irish Times. Catherine, you you had letters in there. 
I did actually. And I mean, this whole thing has really made me think about the, you know, the impact of writing letters. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. myself and the other Wicklow women, my mom, other people I know, you know, been writing letters. And then one, one of our group uh, has a couple of subscriptions. So she screenshots everything on the, on the papers in the morning and sends it to the rest of us. Because, of course, none of us, you know, really buy the papers anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and there have been, like, you know, coming up to the referendum, every day there were letters about it yeah. in one form or another mostly i think most of the letters were from people like us who were mm -hmm. uh talking about voting no and uh, because people were so outraged uh people like us were so outraged at the coverage and um the you know the lack of um a kind of balanced information that was mm -hmm. being used. so yeah i've really enjoyed that and it's, it was and then the letters in the past week as well about an, uh, analyzing what's happened and about in response to the articles that have uh, um that have been in the papers have been really really interesting and um I, so i mean I'll, there's a couple in particular that i wanted to talk about but I'll, I'll come back to that i'll come back to them now in a second but before i forget i just wanted to say over the last few days i've noticed uh you know a few letters kind of you know one letter each day about the upcoming hate speech bill. and I think that is the next thing that's going to be really important yeah, to keep writing right. about keep talking about not that we get a vote on it but I think that just getting yeah. awareness um so my mom actually had a letter uh published today in the, oh. the Indo about the hate speech bill which I'll, I'll I'll come to that anyway afterwards but sorry I'm di di digressing away from the, uh, the oh, referendum that's really but, fine, isn't it, to have your mom now didn't yeah. you and your mom remind me so wasn't it you and you that you and your mom had the, uh, two letters in? We did. Yeah, that was a few weeks ago. So that was, at the, I mean, that was probably a month ago, maybe a bit more, yeah. because I wrote a letter and uh, my mom had also written a letter and uh, we'd sent them in, you know, separately. But I, I was seven o'clock in the evening, someone sent me a tweet that, you know, had a caption from my letter. In it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, the letter is in the paper. So I ran down to the shop to get the paper. And I opened it up and there was my mom's letter right oh, beside God. mine. And I had been talking in my letter about how my mom had worked full time all of her, you know, all of her life and was never, you know, uh, hindered by, you know, Article 41. And um, and then next, and my letter, her letter talking about the same thing was right beside mine. So that was really funny. And that was my letter that then Sharon Kyogam then read out that letter in the Shannon. So that was great. Um, oh, not mom's letter, but anyway, it was lovely to have a, a letter. Lovely. That made me cry. You, what you'll have to do is you have to frame that. Frame that I know. Frame. Yeah, okay. I bought a couple of copies. So I will. I said I must actually. Uh, yeah. It's really Thank nice. Yeah. She loves writing a letter too. She's always, she's been all week now writing letters to politicians and um, all kinds of things. So yeah, so she had a letter today in the Indo about the hate speech bill, which mm, is great. You. Just saying, you know, people need to um, inform themselves as they did mm. about uh, the referendum. So, um, yeah, so that was good. But um, going back to the articles this week, I think probably there were some really, really good ones. Um, Sarah Carey in particular had a yeah. really good article. I'm sure everyone read it. I'll um, get that one up. I'll get, well, I am getting that one. Yeah, ready, you, you keep going. It's the, it was on Saturday. It was actually, it was just on Saturday, the weekend, and she was yeah. kind of talking about being angry at the lack of coverage of the you know, the kind of the motherhood aspect of why people yeah. voted no. And I she was actually on Virgin Media TV, I think, during the week as well. It was a really good clip of her talking about that. Um, and she was very articulate. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was great well, to I... hear somebody talking about the the fact that people, you know, because a lot of the analysis wasn't covering the motherhood part of it. Yeah. Um, so that was really good to hear her. Um, Brida O'Brien was another one who had um, some good commentary on the National Women's Council. I have well, that so. one. I have that yeah. one. I um, hope that we'll see you... some. Uh, Catherine, invest... what if I just put them up randomly and you tell us what, why we're doing it? What yeah, did, sure. I have a few bits highlighted, one? and yeah, I think probably yeah the the probably the most uh, one of the most impactful ones during the week was Kathy Sheridan's. I mean, there were three letters in the paper on Thursday about it, and another three on Friday. Yeah. People were really angry about that article. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got that one there, Rishi. I I don't know what order you sent them in, so. What if I just put Probably. them, uh, go in and put the ones up, and then um, we we can just talk about them yeah. as, as I put them up. Because I don't know what order they're okay, in. Okay, sure. Okay, so I'm going back to screen share. Okay, can you see that one? Now, I I didn't read all of the articles I sent you. Not all of them are ones that I read or have much to say about, but there were just a few in particular that I thought were really. 
Well, this was good by Lorraine Courtney. I read this one today and she's basically saying that, um, you know, it's the, that, well, like the headline says, like people want to get back to basics. Like, why are you asking people what the definition of mother and, mm. and why and trying to change it when, you know, you still have 30 year olds who are living at home because they can't afford mm. to move out and, you know, all that kind of stuff that mentioning what Willie O'D had said. Um, you know, where he was talking about this kind of performative politics and that really what people actually want is actually, you know, concrete changes to make li- our lives better, health, housing, that mm-hmm. sort of stuff, policing. And mm-hmm. you know, I think she was she's fairly on the money here. Like uh, there was there was um again she mentions hate speech and she's kind of just going through the stuff, the policies that are coming from on high. <laughs> That really nobody's asking for. No, I uh, no ordinary Irish people really want that referendum to happen. No, no, it was no movement on the ground as there was in for previous referendums. Mm. I think she's pointed that out there as well. It was it was a good article, I thought. Um, so you know, hopefully, hopefully they <laughs> take note of yeah. of you know what nor like Lorraine Courtney is not particularly radical. You know what I mean? She's normal. Mm-hmm like she's not so so yeah it's, let's hope somebody somewhere is reading it I like um, the you think about the hierarchy of needs even you know we can't yeah. start thinking about uh you know I mean you know we need basic needs need to be met before mm. we can we we need to start you know if we've got spare time then we can tinker around a bit with, with other things but basic needs housing jobs all of those yeah mm. you know. yeah I'll mm. get another one up now and bear with me no, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there, Catherine. Because I think our basic needs. Um, um, do you know that tri- the triangle? The have you Mas- seen those Mas- hierarchy, Mas- of hierarchy of needs? Yeah. 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 So so like a roof over your head is like mm. the bottom you know, line. Food, food, food and roof over shelter. your head. And... Like yeah. Okay, so we're, we've not nobody is hungry in this country. I hope or or not very many people are hungry. But there's a lot of people that are having problems with getting a roof over their head. Like absolutely, yeah. Really care yeah. for like, you know. Right. I think it was interesting. Referendum. Yeah, Leo yeah. Varadkar said in the in the previous article that Leo Varadkar, where was Leo Varadkar? Oh, about everybody getting up early in the morning and, and <laughs> making a good life. Yeah. You know, my yeah. daughter gets up early. She's a doctor. My son is in the defence forces, and he's yeah. up sometimes at five o'clock in the morning doing twenty four hour shifts. And yet, this he had to give up his apartment before mm. he went overseas for. For six months, so he's coming back relatively homeless. Yeah, yeah. So, that's not good enough for our defense forces, men yeah. and women that are coming back home. Like, and yeah. you see that in other countries as well. Yeah, yeah. So, th- this one here question for, for, for Sharon and OG What do you mean by you woke? Like, oh. if you're this was ridiculous. Now, Carol wrote a really good letter about this actually, so I really hope it'll be in tomorrow's paper. Really, yeah. Carol from Wicklow Women, yeah. Good. Um, yeah, that's nonsense. yeah, isn't that just absolutely what do you mean by woke? I mean, but it's also again just like distraction ta- tactics, like you're saying there, sir. It's just yeah. distracting from the, yeah. the main issues, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So they're pretending that they don't know what is meant by that statement, really. Like that journalist is very disingenuous, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, living with it for <laughs> how long, yeah. You know, so and like, I mean, it's been a kind of a joke. And but what it really it, the seriousness behind it mm. is not joke, it's not a joke because you yeah. cannot discuss anything. Or where well, oh, this is my mom's letter from today. Oh, oh this is your mom. Yeah. Oh. That's my mom, Mary Darby. Yeah. Should have your mom on the show. She sounds amazing. Read that out. You have to read <laughs> that out now. She's I will, I'll get her on sometime. Well, I read it. Okay. Yeah, read it uh, out. Let's see. We can't let our treasured freedom of speech be put in danger by our leaders. Freedom of speech is something that has been denied to a majority of societies in the history of mankind. We are lucky to have been born in a country where freedom of speech is a fundamental principle of our society and something that we now take for granted. The government, however, is about to change all that, and Irish people need to inform themselves about these draconian new laws before it is too late. I felt so proud of the Irish people when it became obvious following the results of the recent referendums that they had researched and made up their own minds about the issues, given that the government, the opposition, except Dane 2, and all the NGOs were promoting the opposite. I'm hopeful that Irish people will now research the proposed hate speech laws that are looming and speak out before it is too late. 
freedom of speech is something that we should treasure. Mary Darby. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. She's writing oh. your letters. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Well, we yeah. should get your mom on. We might. Oh, love that. Yeah. yeah. We have to get yeah. your mom on. I will. She's spot awesome. on there. Thing as well is that somebody yeah. whose freedom of speech has been stopped. So somebody who's from a, you know, a, a country that you're not allowed to have freedom. Mm. You know, that when people see things that are, you know, that what was something that we're supposed to take for granted, you know, the freedom of speech. And you compare that to the countries, Iran and all of these places, Saudi Arabia, where freedom of speech is not China, you know, yeah. Russia. When you get when you compare the two, then it would be very blatantly obvious, you know, um, what could possibly be taken away from us. Mm -hmm. and the freedom of freedom of thought freedom of speech you know so yeah so this Anthony. is another letter into the uh into the uh newspaper no no referendum's outcome is insufferable smugness on the part of those who actually campaigned for a no vote the uh, worst part uh, the worst part is the uh, insufferable arrogance of those who campaigned for a yes vote, they cannot understand how people can be so foolish and backward as to reject their well thought out and progressive proposals. They are loud and they can get plenty of media exposure, but there is no way to curb their influence on the body of politics. I think the top part of that letter was missing, Roshin. I think that person was saying... Um, that somebody had said something about the smugness of uh -huh, the no people, but yeah. actually it's the yeah. yes people who are being snug, yeah. yeah the the oh, one? there we go. Look, that's it, I think. Is yeah. It? yeah. Public were yeah. misled by po political leaders. Does somebody want to read that out for somebody who um, might be listening on audio? Sure. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, go on. Um, public were misled by political leaders. Sir, the most disappointing take from the aftermath of the referendums was not just the government's busted dockets, but that we were misled by some politicians saying one thing and doing another. I suspect many TDs and senators shyly voted no and went against that disquieting Leinster House consensus. But a few politicians had an epiphany moment and felt the need to share their delight that they somehow found themselves in the winner's enclosure. It would have been better to say nothing when they did not have the honesty to share their intentions before voting. Actually, sorry, that's a different letter. I thought it was the yeah. same one. Was it the same no, person? That's true. The, the bottom, I think, is the is the yeah first. The oh, sorry, the other one. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think I think this is spot on because there were two. I can think of two politicians who came out and said, "Oh, I actually voted no, no." But they one said that she hadn't campaigned, and then there was pictures of her with a no, yes, yes sign. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know yeah. it. It reflects. Yeah. It. I understand that politicians have to abide by the party whip. Yeah. So mm. and but but she, why then come out afterwards and say that you changed your mind? That actually is worse, uh, it's sir. It's I think. Worse. Just take. Yeah. One, don't tell. I don't want to know. Yeah, I think so. And I, like, I, I, I don't think if she had voted no, no, and a yes, yes was the result that she would have come out and said, oh, actually vote against them. Yeah. He was trying to take the opportunity to jump on to the sort of success of of the no side. Yeah. And yeah. It, it seems a bit weak. Backfired. You know, yes, we don't, yeah. even the first four politicians here, like we don't need any more. Thanks very much. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this was a great um, article, I thought. Very scathing about our <laughs> government. Um. It was kind of a scathing analysis, I thought, of their response, you know, all the ministers off traveling, yeah. being wined and dined yeah. this week while the citizens are back home, uh, you know, reeling after the the um, the results, you know, and mm. none of them here to answer questions on why they were so out of touch with public opinion. Um, yeah. But you think they were thrilled, mm. thrilled to be going to all the countries. They were delighted. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> thrilled. You know, where they, you know, the rocks that they've crawled under that we can't find them, you know. But when you think about it, none of them interviewed all week. None of them. There hasn't been any interviews with anyone yeah. big. Finalists, the whole lot of them. Yeah. I think that's really the democracy, though. Seriously, yeah. I'm seriously beginning to wonder. Do you know, like... Well, I... It, was it... Do? Did, did anyone notice that the difference in the, the post-referendum coverage this time versus the last time, because yeah. I noticed now the last two referendums I had campaigned on behalf of the yes side. So for the changes, which were accepted by 
the Irish people, right? So, but but I I don't remember the losers being interviewed all over the place for yeah. three days following the loss of their mm-hmm. campaign. The way we have had, like yeah. we had a whole week last week of pe- people who campaigned for a yes, yes vote being interviewed for like, yeah. and people who campaigned for no, no, mm. some of them fine were interviewed, but, but were interviewed with such disgust. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like Sarah Carey on, on Virgin Media with um with that Kira presenter who who seemed she just couldn't get her head around the fact that people voted no. But I, I really genuinely don't think that the no campaigns in the last two referendum were invited on every single programme to discuss how they had failed in their campaign and how people had gone against them. Like it was just so bizarre. Yeah. You know yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. bizarre is the only word for it. It actually has been so bizarre the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. That, like, so, they're acting yeah. like yes, won the day. Mm-hmm. Like they were, they were interviewing so many yes, yes people. Yeah, I actually think the, the really media strange. are still in denial. <laughs> I think they're in denial. I actually do think they're in denial. Yeah, yeah. And they must be, you know, before they must be sitting around the editor, sitting at the, the the journalists, must, the print media journalists must be sitting at their desks, desk, scratched on their heads, mm-hmm. and you can just imagine the conversations they're having around the the, the water cooler or the coffee the, the coffee machine, and um and conversations they have before they go on air. Yeah. Um, I, I, just, you know, I think that they're, they're sitting around saying. Oh my God, the deplorables! You know, I mean, seriously, <laughs> I think that's what they're thinking. You know, yeah. the great unwashed. How dare they vote? You know, the ten yeah. percent people that run this show. You know, sort of thing like and and how dare we? How dare we actually think for ourselves? Yeah, and give these thinking. people the answer. Yeah, the deplorables. You know. So I really <laughs> hope that when you know in the next couple of weeks when they're all back from their you know St Patrick's Day travels. That um that the momentum on talking about the referendum will keep going and that people will actually ask those people difficult questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't make them think, talk about I don't think the, the outcome of this is my personal opinion. I don't think the outcome of the referendum can go away at just what they think it will, because the I think they're not listening to the will of the people or what people are saying. And it's going to be the same with the hate speech, the same with the surrogacy, and the same with the anusiasia. So yeah. it, it, they cannot get away from this now. It's not going to be just a tick in the box exercise, what they thought it would be. Ah, tick the box. That we'll do as we're told, you know, that little sheep going into the pen. Um, so I think the the conversation and the residue of the uh referendum is going to be here for a long time i think this year you've got the local elections you've got the european elections and we are going to have um a national election this year maybe i really hope that we'll have emboldened people to ask difficult questions when people come to their door canvassing yeah Yeah. and to really think i i really i feel really hopeful that this result will have emboldened people yeah, I think it's going to be difficult. jumping a jumping board, you know, sort of thing that where that we as Irish people we've had enough of not being consulted. Mm-hmm. We've had enough of not having open discussions, rightly or wrongly, but open debate about everything, you know, okay. in, in a respectful manner. You know, we we for years now we've not been able to debate anything. We just it just if you don't think you know the right way, you're shut down and name calling. And and I find that highly insulting as an Irish person to be to be called names and all of this because of the of the because I have a, an attitude I think about something you know and it doesn't mm. it doesn't agree with this kind of you know sort of narrative but you can't discuss it you know there's no what's no you know respectful debate huh? yeah. There's no critical thinking anymore. No, You're not allowed no. to be think critically. Like, like I've got friends that we 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 have critical debates about various different issues, but we're still friends at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, it's like that's the way. Yeah. And, and that's the way life is. You know, you're gonna have yeah. you're gonna come across people in life that you're gonna disagree with, but they're still nice people, so you'll still talk to them. You're not gonna go. I'm canceling you. I'm never want to see yeah. you again. Talk to yeah. the hand, the face, yeah. listening. You know, yeah. you go. Well, okay, we had to agree to disagree. Let's move on to a new subject to talk about that might interest us or something. But yeah. you're labeled as far right if you disagree with anything that the government says. And 
they're making people ashamed of being Irish, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it's absolutely appalling, especially, you know, with um, Paddy's Day and stuff like that. Like I was proud to be in, at, at the parades yesterday and seeing the tricolor flying, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, it represents peace and unity, not far right extremists, as the government likes to say. And that's what they're trying to do to, to like divide the country, you know, by doing that sort of stuff. And the other thing that actually I found uh, quite interesting is that this was the highest no vote in the history of Ireland. Yeah. So like, that's why they've all pissed off to other countries. <laughs> You know, <laughs> they're, they're, they're like, they've had their head in the sand for too long. And then now they're like, oh, crap, our things didn't work out. <laughs> Ireland is wakening up and, you know, and I, really it, woke, I, woke, and I think woke. it's just glorious, you know. And like even yeah. my, my father, he's he's oh, he's been like a feat of false support since the day he was 18 to when he's able to vote. And, you know, they like, I don't hold it against them. We have... <laughs> Very interesting debate. My poor mother has to leave the room when we start because it's hilarious. But <laughs> but like he, he's still my father at the end of the day. But he was like, "This is absolutely preposterous." I'm voting no on this, and mm. I go, "But your your party is telling you to vote yes." And he goes, "Ah, here I have got critical thinking in my head. You know, I'm voting no. You know, but uh, yeah." So well, I well I even I'm from the north, so like I I grew up with people. Everybody, my best friends didn't have the same opinions of me, but we mm. could still all disagree with respectfully. Yeah. And we could still then go out to the disco at, 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 at that night and, and go shopping, clothes shopping together, makeup shopping. But, you know, we we all came from different sides of the divide, but we didn't cancel people out. We didn't ghost people. We That's didn't. Until about six or seven years ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Something yeah. changed. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's no power because I think, you know, um, I, I remember in a couple of, obviously will never be named, a couple of people in my life, you know, sort of when we were younger before all of this cancelling and all this kind of language. So it made your debates about things that were, that affected women, right, women's lives. And I think it, what it happened, this is my view, it could be all wrong, was, you know, I personally don't like people shouting. You know, get kind. Of, I don't like aggressive people. That makes me really nervous and anxious. And so, if somebody's screaming their opinion down, I say, "Okay, okay, <laughs> I believe you." Okay, and then you go off. You know, and that I found so it's kind of the cancelling things, the screaming uh, button, <laughs> you know, yeah. sort of thing. Right just... in your face, you know. I just yes. think that to me is um. What it is that is what, what society has broken down through the cancelling and the ghosting of people and and the censorship of media. It's really really divided and it has fractured us all as a society and within our local communities as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put this back up because I know we've got a lot to get through. And this one, I thought this is especially as the, the two of you, uh, we've got two people with disability. Yes, uh, I didn't actually read that one. Yeah, mm. opinion and an analysis by Rachel Dwyer. Go ahead, take it from here, Catherine. Oh, do you want me to read it? Yeah, I haven't read that one. Sorry, you, can, you haven't read anybody read it. Well, I think what <laughs> comes across is that care cannot be a matter for families alone. And what I like about this one here is, you know, it's in February twenty-two. It, this lady mentions, you know, Thatcher's words echoed the care referendum, and our T-shirt was captured saying that care was not the state's responsibility. Yeah. Wow! No, yeah. I I watched him say that, and I went, "Oh my God!" You know, is this part of a, a film script where he goes in and humiliates himself by saying that? You know, there's a famous quote from Margaret Thatcher. There's no such thing as society. There are individual men and women. At least she knows the difference between man and a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's real or what's not. <laughs> yeah. There are individual men and women and there are families. Thatcher mm. was echoed in the care referendum when our T-shirt was captured saying that it was not the state's responsibility. Yeah. So I think that was the biggest insult to the to the actual Irish people that it wasn't the state's responsibility. Where are we living? Where in God's name? And where has as we I said at the beginning, where has society gone wrong? 
Um, I think that the invisible carries at the end paragraph. If work and society are the tip of the iceberg, as the economist J.K. Gibson Graham has argued, then acts of care are invisible bulk that keeps us all afloat. It's a family yeah. caring for sick and disabled children, spouses caring for spouses, and children caring for their parents. It's exhausting. It's exhausted nurses, nurses, nurses giving more than medicine when the state won't pay them a living wage. It's Chrissy gently moving her mop onto the hospital bed so that things can be clean and set to right. It's the blood bikes and blood donations, not all. There's probably more to that, but I just think that was very powerful. Mm. And yeah. see if we get to the next one. If I press the right button. All oh, I, I would say everyone here has something to say. <laughs> that was a good one. The national like 96% of their funds. <laughs> yeah. So who wants to start off this one? National Women's Council is completely out of touch by Brida O'Brien. I thought it was a very good commentary on the National Women's Council. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, certainly. Uh, I would classify them, Catherine, now as radical feminists. You know, lost the plot completely. You know, so they should just be called the National People's Council, not even yeah, the National yeah. People's Council. Yeah. Just, like, you know, you know called National it. Woke Council. Yeah, um, I have yeah. a nickname for them, but I don't know if I should tell them tell you as lo on 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 air. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but I I think you know sort of thing like I mean there were there was I I read an article a, a good while ago you know sort of thing about that the you know um that everything you know sort of good thoughts and good ideas start and then they turn into businesses and then they turn into complete and utter um you know bullies you know. Um, and I think that that, you know, that attitude and I really would have a serious problem. And this comes from a, a disabled um, attitude that they would use disabled people. I know. Uh, I, I find absolutely beyond beyond comprehension, beyond words. And, I you know, sort of thing and anybody that has been used by them, you know, sort of thing, because they do not. They had a slogan. No woman left behind. But they absolutely 100 percent left disabled women behind yeah and yeah. they did never it is absolutely you know absolutely disgusting they did never ever discussed what it was felt like you know sort of thing for they didn't even now they do have on their board a disabled woman but her in, in, in every, i think everybody knows her i think her name I can't think of her mcdonald but i think her her platform is the traveling community is you know it's not as opposed to though she has obviously views on disability but no woman left behind is really, honestly, is a slogan that they should really say. Um, yeah. Yes, we do. We let we leave a lot of women behind. I think they need a complete overhaul, and I think they need to come out with some kind of a statement as to why they uh, turned out to be so out of touch mm. with the women of Ireland, yeah. and why they were not advocating for us. Why they weren't, um, you know, if if seventy five percent of the of the women of Ireland did not agree with what they were saying, yeah, yeah. Why, why weren't they at least giving a balanced view? But also, why, you know, sort of thing like in, you know, they went straight back into, absolutely straight back into, you know, I think the next day I saw a tweet was straight back into abortion, you know, yeah. straight back into all of this kind of stuff without any self critical look at themselves mm. and say. You know, listen, are we let's listen to the people, you know, sort of thing like let's listen to the taxpayers who pay our wages, you know, but yeah, no, no I'm, you know, I we're OK, Jack. And off we go again. And honestly, they've lost all credibility as far as I'm concerned. They seriously, you know, they don't rep I don't know who they represent, you know, mm. men. <laughs> Maybe. So I don't know. I'd say most men disagree with their stances as well, to be honest. <laughs> I think yeah. some man actually changed their logo around. So instead of NWC, they turned it upside down, the W to M. Very <laughs> funny. It was very funny. Um, it was a little gif. It, just it was up on Twitter. It was oh, great. Sorry, like, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, I think, like, like the, 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 it, just looking at that article that you had up there. So it says in 2022, the National Women's Council received uh, 945,266 
euro from seven government departments, so seven different departments plus the HSE, mm-hmm. and 39,000 from donations and subscriptions. And they are from, you know, organization do- subscriptions. They're not from ordinary women because they only yeah. have something like four grand from yeah. members. Yeah, yeah, membership is really low. Like of individual women, I know an awful lot of women who used to pay, pay their subs who no longer do so. So I'm one of them. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. And I know there's a good few others as well. And if so, if they're saying that they represent women, mm. but they don't represent women who don't think that men can be with them. Mm. They don't I think represent he- disabled women. They clearly don't represent the women who voted no in this refer- referendum. So who's left? Is that, just, yeah. All they represent is wealthy women who live in Dunleary. Like now, that's now I was going to say that, but it's, you know, like, did you see the video jokes that were going around Twitter about Dunleary? <laughs> they voted yes. Oh my god, they were cracker. Percent. They were so funny. Maybe, <laughs> I got you know what I got. I'm looking for the one with uh the lady uh Marie Carey, but Kathy you know when Rosa. I come up, I'm I've got in my uh, in these, so I can actually start sharing these. And watchdog no role to to query referendum spare, uh, spending, which I thought that was oh, quite yeah. A, a it's a, yeah. I, I was actually uh saw that um uh Grift did a poll there uh the other day. Hang on. Um, Oops. They did a- I'll edit that one out. I can't but see. All I can you- see is your folders. Yeah. yeah. Can I sharing? No, no. Sharing, no. Sharing, sharing your folder, not sharing the image. List of files. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Isn't it amazing, though, what governments feel totally and absolutely cool about taxpayers' monies, you know, who decides where yeah. it goes? Who gets it? Who's the, you know, the favourite of, you know? And honestly, I wonder how some of them can sleep at night time. Seriously, I'm not joking. Yeah. You know, when you see children that are, you know, in desperate need of emergency surgery, um, all of the things, yeah. you know, how people, you know, sort of thing like are, are suffering, you know? Like how, how do they, or maybe they don't, maybe, maybe they it just, it's knocked out of them, you know? Maybe that's... Who you know, below maybe, their list of priorities. Yeah. yeah. Who do you think were the win were the political winners out of all this? There's very few few uh people in opposition. Independence. Who do you yeah. think came out of the, the political winners who, who were the politicians that were representing the people and listening to the people? Well, my unlikely winner is is Ronan Mullen. I yeah. never like I just couldn't believe myself on Saturday evening when we we uh the so five of us from the countess after a lot of arguing with the people on the gate got a few we got a few extra people into Dublin Castle for the very last bit of the announcement um for the announcement of the second result so there was a couple of us there was a couple um of people from Equality Not Care. Mm-hmm. And Senator Ronan Mullen left to hear the result of the the care referendum, and so I was chatting to him for ages. And honestly, I couldn't believe it. If you'd have gone back ten years ago and said mm-hmm. you'll be shaking his hand and mm-hmm. telling him thank you and standing proudly beside him, I would have laughed my head off mm-hmm. because obviously I have severe, I have serious disagreements with him about certain things. Mm-hmm. He was gracious. Where the other politicians were mm. pushing us out of the way to get the to get into their the right photographs earlier in the day, he pulled us in. He pulled in women who had campaigned, who weren't represented, you know, by the politicians. He pulled them in for photographs, made sure they were in front and centre. He, he was gracious and unassuming. And just very dignified. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. on the radio, and to any any time I saw him on the radio or telly, he was very, very good as well. Mm. Very he has good. been great, and about the hate speech as well. He's really. That was this guy who was so you know religious, mm. so anti-abortion, so um, circle. Yeah, screaming at the radio one time when he was talking about religion in schools, and yet he was. Yeah. Spot on. He his he was just mm. a lovely, lovely person to be around. Yeah, I think well, maybe she, it comes back to what we were just talking about. Political winner, but it, certainly for me, I would vote for him in the morning. Mm-hmm. And and 
that's saying something because I disagree with him on quite a few. I, I feel like, agree with like I said earlier, Roshan, I feel you could have a serious debate with him about anything yeah. and it mm -hmm. would remain civilised. Yeah. yeah, and that's how it should be. And you know, we should. Yeah. This is like what we were saying earlier. You know, we should be able to. We don't have to agree on everything. No. Yeah. You know, I mean, I thought Pater Tavine came. You yeah. know, was just so articulate and so dignified and yeah. so intelligent in his arguing. Yeah. As well, I'm sure there's plenty of things that we wouldn't agree on, but you know, I yeah, I mean, but I'm going to find myself going. Well, I, these are the important I, things that I think. This is what I'm going to. I, yeah. I, I might not agree on other things, but I'm going to. I'm going to find someone who I agree with on those important things because I certainly will not be voting for. But I didn't anyone. think anything I saw him in, you know, sort of thing. I didn't think he was disrespectful. No. He was just factual. He was yes. just calling out the facts and calling out the reasons and debating what his thoughts were. Extremely reasonable. Yeah. It was the others that the scream, the loud screaming button, the red button types, you know, shut up, shut up. You're, you're, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, and I really resent it in Virgin, whatever you call your one. I don't know her name. I'm really bad at names. But when she was talking to that woman, you know, who was talking about, you know, being mothers and all of that and how important, where she said, you want to bring it back to conservative life, mm. that we could roll back women, you know, mothers who give birth, you know, sort of thing. Mm. Oh, and it's going to be like the 50s. And like, I thought, are you stupid? This woman's stupid. You know, mm -hmm. you cannot roll back, you know, no matter what. You know, this idea that women, you know, I thought the whole idea of feminism and the whole idea of this was the freedom for us to also think. Yeah. And now women telling us, you know, oh, well, you voted this way and you're a mother. Well, you're gone back 50 years. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I thought that was just pure well, it's the most ignorant thing I've heard in all. I've heard loads. You know? I think the mm -hmm. um, Attorney General's leak was was a page turner, especially I've seen on the upfront by, was it Katie Hanlon, I mm -hmm. think it is? Yeah, um, she, they, there was a man in the audience there that he said that he read the Attorney General's, um, uh, the leak that was wasn't supposed to be leaked out to the public, but it was. And then you see the TDs there, there, there that were voting for the a yes campaign. We're like, oh yeah, it, it shouldn't have happened, but we did. We think that all, all the documents should be released to the public, but we're gonna do an investigation to find out who leaked it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. if we do find out who leaked it, I'd like to buy that man a, or a woman a drink. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, cause like. Or was it deliberately leaked? You know, I, 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 I think uh, it's yeah. I say it was. I'm I'm only speculating here, <laughs> and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but but I, you know what I, really did it for me too is like when you think about. It, I remember one of the things, uh, Sorky and and Catherine. You've all said you know that you know you wouldn't have uh, been a great fan of uh, Ronald Mullins, and then at the Wicklow Women for event, uh, um um. Sarah Holmes said, you know, she would never agree on Rona Mullins, and now she's a pin up on the, on the wall, you know. <laughs> then I remember, remember that she said yeah. that at the event. Yeah. And I think, too, that um, I think Pado Tobin, he really, really came out a real win. He was in the door, in there. But so, the two other people, and there's one politician who last summer, he was on his own, and that was Senator Jerry Crockwell. Yeah. That, this time last year, he was on his own. He was on the Irish Political Roundup with me on the other cha sister channel, and he was on his own uh, speaking up for women's rights. Yeah. And uh, and I think, you know, are we giving him enough uh, applause and thanking him enough? Mm -hmm. um, Pada Tobin is the only politician actually to bring up child trafficking in the door. Mm. Yeah. the only one and I think to um, uh, Senator Michael McDowell I think oh, he yeah. would swing yeah. for the Jones and the people who just swing people over from oh I don't know the government he swung it over for the don't knows so I think it was very mm. you could say it was very clever it was very clever but I think Senator Joe uh, Sharon, Sharon I always pronounce her name wrong Sharon Jogan Jogan yeah. I actually do think, um, you know, fair kudos to uh, Senator Jerry Crockwell. He was out front and centre yeah. out before anyone else. 
and mm. uh, you know, at his own, you know, it, it used to say, he said to me one day, well, should people will support me more, that might give me more confidence to say more and more. But um, and then uh, last summer, everybody got behind him on Twitter, mm. and I think that was, but yeah. yeah, I think, I think Tom Clonan deserves an honorable mention yes. as well in terms yeah. of. Yes specifically talking about the deficiencies of 42B. He was very focused in his approach to that. And I think that worked with a lot of people who wouldn't yeah. have really been too upset about changing 41.2. A lot of people, like like if you think 60% or so, there was 60 something percent in the family referendum. I'd say that would have carried through to the to the care or you know to to the to the second one. Mm. And the and the the difference, I'd say, was people who had been persuaded mm. by him and other activists, mm. specifically in the deficiencies for 42B. And it was very interesting that he was very much vindicated by that Attorney General leak as well, because mm. it specifically said, yes, this wording will not give the state any of it. Mm. So he was exactly right in his analysis of that. And mm. I thought his, I saw him speaking in Galway and his his passion for the rights of sp- particularly young disabled people, I suppose he has a young son, but for the rights of disabled people to have the autonomy and independence recognised was really something else to to watch. You know, he, he was very much, it wasn't a, he didn't, he didn't come across as, oh, the poor me that has to do all this care. He was absolutely livid on behalf of his son. Yeah. Mm. And it really was powerful what he said. I think he he. But really... he pointed out, sir, that that is really, you know, that anybody that has any dealings or anybody who's disabled or anybody, even they're even now on the news today discussing about the assessments of children. Yeah. You know, uh, supports that children might need. They're so far behind. You name it. The whole thing is a, an absolute joke. But I think what people really hit off, you know, even if they had nothing to do with disability. You know, he was telling his story. Yeah. The story about his son, his journey with his son, and also the fact that, um, and I think this struck a chord with people, that his siblings, when he died, that the siblings, specifically the daughter, yeah, you know, would be, well, sure, can't she mind? Yeah. Uh, you know, and that, I think that hit everybody. Yeah. Do you know I think it did. Mean? It was very powerful. I really? saw him talking in Trinity at the debate in Trinity uh, that night. I don't know if anyone else was there. There was him and there was there was the panel the of four people. One. Yeah, it was the same day. I didn't go to the UCD when I listened to it, but I went to the Trinity one that night. I think I was telling you about it, Savvy. Mm-hmm. Um, like the, he was talking and then the other three people were women who were, one was a professor of history. I can't remember who called their names now, but one was a professor of history. The other two were in law. And all, I mean, they were all very interesting, really intelligent, highly qualified women, um, you know, talking about kind of the history of the constitution and the changes and what it might mean. It might mean this, and we've got to, you know, you know, this will have to be interpreted and that'll have to be interpreted. And it was very interesting, but it was a lot of just a lot of words and a lot of talk and a lot of speculation. And then Tom was the last person to get up and speak. And he was just so powerful. Mm-hmm. It was all, you know, it was like the three women were kind of up here talking about just the words yeah. and what things might mean. And then academia. he was like on the ground with the normal people, mm-hmm. you know, talking about the practicalities and the difficulties of his life and his family's life every day. If I think anyone who would have gone in there kind of on the fence would have come out. He was so, mm-hmm. so much more impactful than yeah. uh, all the academics talking yeah, about, they- you know. True story, and I, I think this is really relevant, Catherine, that you're saying, because when it's important to have academia, it's important to have policy because they they are the ones that the government listen to, and it has to be factual, but it's way up there. Mm. You know, if you get somebody's story, you know, sort of thing, mm. and they're telling it truthfully and honestly and not embellishing it to make it sound like, you know, just these are the facts. This is my day-to-day living. This is it's like the Maslow's hierarchy we talked about earlier. The basic yeah. needs have to be met before we can kind of have time yeah. and spare energy to deal with yeah. the, you know, For the, high, the high-minded stuff. You know, I sort also, of thing. like, yeah. I also think you know, like what I found annoying throughout this whole campaign was you had these women in very powerful and privileged positions telling us women who just 
or housewives or whatever. Like, and I'm an educated woman. I have a degree from a new university, which I'm very proud of. I put it in a frame and it's in my hall. Um, mm. And, you know, like, I, and like I'm, I may be a housewife now, but that, like, that's because, like, things didn't go, ha life, you know? It, it, it happens. Mm. You know, yeah, um, yeah. exactly. That's, you know, and they're yeah. just telling people that, like, you know, that oh, you like, and even one of the women um said at the UCD one, like the same night that Tom Clonan was on, I should have went to that one. That would have been a lot more interesting than the one I went to. Use. Oh, two hours, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I've never been so <laughs> bored in my life. You know, like one hour listening to them presenting for ten minutes each, and then another forty-five minutes of them discussing what they said, and they're not even given the chance to the people who were on Zoom to ask their questions properly. Which I found like I don't even know what they were asking because they just paraphrase the question and go, "Oh, we don't have time for this." And they go, "We would have had time for this if you gave the extra hour at the end." to 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 people to, to the floor and the other thing the woman one woman says goes i don't agree with the, the new words but um i would like to come up with them myself and um but we should go yes and then i found a back at the at the the debate in griffith college the week before we went uh the monday before we went to the vote to the polling station she goes progress trumps perfection i go no sorry pro, pro uh, perfection should trump progress i'm sorry but like we yeah. have to go on with this progress crap i'm sorry actually there's a very good song by john rich he's an american country western singer great song it's called progress and it, the words are shove your progress where your sun doesn't shine it's a great song <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm just going through you. my head throughout this whole campaign you know? our campaign song. <laughs> can i ask a question what anybody thinks because i've been thinking about this for the last few days what politicians came out the worst of this? Do you know what I mean? You asked Roshi and what politicians came out, you know, and we all have, you know, we all know who they are. Aww. There's a couple of them now, you know, I don't know if you're not allowed to mention them, but there's a couple that really, oh my God. I think they all you know, came, I yeah, think they all of them, yeah. Some were actually worse than others. I you think it's the more vocal Bacic. they were. The yeah. Ivana Bacic. Oh my she, God. Stand you. She yeah. really did not relate at she all. Like women, like she, think. I don't know. She like what women. She I, was the, I was in the Labour Party. Yeah. And I never liked her. I was a women's officer for Carla Kilkenny and I never liked her. Mm. It's like she's so far away and disconnected from anyone that I don't think she's even connected to herself. I think um, the, the, the three leaders of the, the three parties are in government. Yeah. Roger O'Gorman, Eamon Ryan, and um, yeah. Michael Martin. Like, and even when Crypt Media asked all three of them a question, to be fair to Eamon Ryan, he looked embarrassed having them walking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and and like even even like uh, um, Ben Scanlon did a rebuttal to what actually happened, and he said there was a woman from the examiner was allowed to shout out her question and had a lengthy forward and back with them. But when he goes to speak every time, they, do, yeah. they just don't want to talk to him and they just like walked out. And I just think like, it's a height of ignorance. Yeah. It, like he asks the difficult questions. And if you want to be a, a, in, in leader in government, you need to be prepared to answer the difficult questions. And it's okay to turn around and say, well, I cannot answer that question, but I will get back to you at a later time. Yeah. Mm. That's being honest, you know. Yeah. But instead of that, they just completely ignored him. And I just mm. thought that was like, and I think a lot of people, when they saw that, they were like, yeah. No. I yeah. think Sinn Féin came out the worst party. Yeah. 80% of their core voters voted no. Mm. I could be wrong, it could be 90. 80% mm. of their core voters voted no. Mm. Yeah. Um, and as a uh, supposedly progressive woman and a, a female politician, an empowered woman, she really didn't connect with the women of Ireland mm. and and the, and and the Sinn Féin party. Um, I think it's going to be interesting in the general elections now um, of the the Sinn Féin vote. Um, so who can, if you ask me, uh, Gladys, who do I think came out the worst? Well, we take it for granted as a given. Leo Varadkar came out really bad. Uh, Michal Martin came out bad. Roger Gorgorman came out bad. Mm -hmm. And actually, think, I think Roger Gorgorman ca uh, came out worse than his political leader, right? Eamon Ryan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think Sinn 
Spain, Ivana Backwick came out bad. I actually think Social Democrats came out bad. Yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, Social Democrats. So and I the actually, people before profit, let's not forget what they did yeah. to women in September last year, yeah. calling us a bunch yeah. of Nazis. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and then they had to cheat the next day to say, let's get rid of Fina Fall and Fina Gale out of government. I go, get him, get him, run a jump, man. Seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the worst party, opposition party. Use for advocate for the yes. So stop trying to hide behind that. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, but if, is there anything that we could do? You know, uh, it, the jumping, it, the next thing is the hate speech, you know, and that's hugely important. You know, I've seen some people talking about, you know, that they would like to change the yes, no, they were happy with the no, uh, the first no, you know, sort of thing, but they'd like the yes to be turned into, uh, no, the no to be turned into a yes in the the feminist attitude of taking the word mother out of the constitution, oh, okay. which I mean, really, seriously, like, I mean, honest, honestly, I, 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 I can't, the mindset, I don't understand. And I don't understand when, you know, like with the word feminist, you know, sort of thing, like, I mean, what is a feminist? Start off a sentence, you know, what I am. Feminist feminist. Why do you have to tell anybody? Why do you have to tell anybody? Yeah. I don't have to tell anybody, mm. you know? I don't know what it is. So. It makes you wonder. Yeah. I, I used to say when I was on radio that I didn't believe in the, this new fake feminism that has arisen over the last, say, 20 years. I said that in radio and I'm saying it now. What is a feminist? I think that's going to be a new thing coming coming forward. What is a real feminist? Um, Because it really did, the fake feminism, in my opinion, came from Hollywood about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah, Hollywood dress, to cover like up a, the Harvey Dutch oh, yeah. one scene yeah. and the um the the sofa uh the sofa casting and all the other things nasty but, things that oh, goes on. A, it's, it's it's politically incorrect. But what they've now done to feminism has now told us, you know, sort of thing. You can't be old. You can't be wrinkled. You can't have anything real. Yes. You know, so you can't have anything. Yeah. You know, so you're just not acceptable. You know, sort of thing. And now, now, you know, men can be women, and all of this kind of world that we're living in. But we're not acceptable to me. To be fem is to be feminist, and feminism is to be that you're okay. You're you're okay. Who you are. You're a woman. You're grand. You stay at home you're, and homeschool no, your children. You false eyelashes and false out. Yeah. You know, and go, go to Turkey and get a bomb. You know, sort of thing. Buy a bomb and buy <laughs> buy bits of yourself. Do you know? It's nuts, crazy, crazy nuts stuff. Okay, I've had episode, enough plastic Georgie. surgery. I'm not getting even Botox on because <laughs> yeah. I've had my whole life. I've had plastic, plastic surgery. surgery, but that was to save me leg. <laughs> 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 but you know what? I think we're running, we've run over time, but I think that's, you know, really good questions what coming up. The hate speech bill, we've got yeah. surrogacy, we've got um we even even what feminism is, and even if uh, ageism. You no, know, I that's what I love about you know this program is it's is that the fact is we're celebrating women oh women of 40 and above. You know, it's, we're going back to the core basics, in my opinion, of respecting older women again, the way it was when we were all growing up. Mm. You know, respecting women. You know, I, I'm i 57 in April. Yeah, because last year I told you that I was 57 and my friend Michelle and Derry said, and Siobhan said, no, because I'm called Roshin, I'm not Roshin. You're only 56. So I said, oh my God, I'm going home in a year younger. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but... Uh, but you no, know, I think it's about celebrating being a woman, celebrating everything that comes with being a woman, from having your period to childbirth to coming home with and breastfeeding to going through the menopause to actually post menopause when really you don't have any more Fs to give. Do you know that way? And celebrating having your wrinkles, your wisdom lines, and not where you just don't give a damn what anybody thinks anymore. But also, but Roshi, the real support of women, that women can give one another. Yes. That to me. So I always thought, you know, sort of thing, because I don't, I, I never, I didn't have sisters, you know, um, that I had this daydream that if I had a sister, everything would have been rosy in the garden. But I have daughters and that's not actually the way it works. <laughs> well, we can be your sisters now, Gladys. We can all be your sisters. Here. I used to be envious of people having loads of sisters and thinking, oh my God, why can't, you know, why can't I can't have that? You know, but I just think the support that women can give one another is beyond, mm -hmm. you know, 
real, real level support. Yeah. You know, I think honestly, that's what come out of it for me yeah. out of this uh, last year. Yeah. Um, and I think we get better at that. Sarah Holmes phoned me. You know, Sarah Holmes phoned me that day from Wicklow Women for Women at l- lunchtime. And then Catherine's really the friendliness of the day, you know, and support. And um, that was when I really started to see how women support women. Up until that, I'd never seen it until this campaign and meeting you all and seeing where women really did look after one another. Mm-hmm. I that's think really we're going is. back to that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I think you know that I think it was always there. It just got slightly lost in all of the battles that everybody was fighting. The you know sort of thing like in the dark, you know, the, whatever you know sort of. And I think it's slightly get lost. And it, it the idea that that you can talk freely and disagree. It's like a it's like a political uh, book club. <laughs> Well, let's leave it there, ladies. We've got we're going ten minutes over time. We said we'd keep it to an hour, but you know, I want to thank each and one of you for coming. So, if we give one another the last word of what what their favorite part of the the whole campaign and the uh, referendum, uh, let's give that to the last word to each. Gladys, in in uh, in very simple terms and quickly, what was your favorite part of the referendum? The win. The win. <laughs> I like that. Sorka. The canvassing. The canvassing, yeah. And yeah. Catherine. I think just the it's it's kind of renewed my faith in humanity going forward. I had lost mm-hmm. I felt like I'd lost a lot of faith and hope in, in people and society. And it's been it's renewed it. It's really given me renewed hope for change and mm-hmm. for women and you know, women like me, stay at home mothers, women like me just speaking up and that we can actually do something. Mm-hmm. We can make and a Sabina? Um, I think the friendships we made during with yeah. with the canvassing and um also meeting people through Confident Women Ireland as well, like you know, mm. uh, but I I think the friendships um and and uh, the connections that we've made, you know, we're not alone anymore, you know. No, and that's how I we feel. have an army. We have an army of women and <laughs> and men who support us. So don't don't yeah. don't forget the men. Don't yeah. forget you know, the men. They're important too. Yeah. yeah. Back. <laughs> I would say, you know, how you were talking, now. Catherine, yeah. about, you know, stay-at-home moms. I was a lone parent. I had to be a stay-at-home mom, too. And after you read le- your letter, I came down and said, oh, God, it made me cry. But your letter was the... Listen to your letter that night at Wicklow Women for Women. Look, I'm, I'm emotional. I let go. It was like, listen to your letter. And I keep going back and listening to it. It's funny, right? Mm-hmm. And I've told, I told somebody this week in authority listening to your letter was where i let go of my my self-imposed forced social bias of me having to be a stay-at-home mom and a lone parent your letter released something in me and i'm not just saying it because you're here i think i said that to everybody here too so that to me is the personal thing that i got not out of the the win and the camaraderie and women supporting women and you know the win, but I thought I think it's and the friendships and the the panel discussion, but I think it's that for me is something I will take with me and to other women who are parenting alone and stay at home moms. I'm gonna hand them your letter. I'm gonna show them your video because it was so powerful. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Rosie. Thank you. Lovely. And I thank you all for your friendship. I remember, Sorka, I met you at the Let Women Speak. Um, walking, going, it was actually walking in the IGS to go to the to the um stadium, which was the first time I really spoke to you. And Sabine, I met you at the Let Women Speak. Because afterwards, you came down and uh, you 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 came down off the stage and you were right in front of me. Little did that we know that day. Uh, you, the, I thank God I was nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what does that mean? <laughs> thank God I was nice. You know, but, I can't you imagine know, you not being nice to anyone, Roisin. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I know, but you know, and I met you, Catherine, at the Le- at the Wicklow Women for Women, and Gladys. I met you up in Dublin, uh, in the hotel where we had um. What that was. What was that for? I've forgotten. That was the the health the health at uh, the health. Oh, the, yes, yes. And where Jeez. I met Paula and Tracy. Yeah. Yeah, Paula, Tracy, and yeah. 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 
you know, I've forgotten the name of what the cause, <laughs> the name of, you know, there's so, so many yeah, it's fantastic. We're gonna and like everyone else, we're gonna we're, we like everyone watching this. We're gonna fall out with friends. We're gonna have <laughs> not disagreements. No, I'm gonna rephrase that. We're gonna have disagreements, but I think the main thing is we don't fall out, fall out, mm -hmm. and we come back to yeah, we well, disagree with you on that, but you know what? We're not gonna let it come between us. We're not going to let it because no, we're higher than that. Come. We've bigger yeah. fights to fight in this war against women. <laughs> and I have to yeah. say that circa who I will always be forever grateful you know so when I for the first time that I've ever gone to any demonstration in my life ever and Circa who was a what, what were you Circa in, in Posey Parker's um with the jacket on uh, oh whatever. first aid yeah oh, were you yeah, yeah and you had my poem in your pocket written out I will be honest oh to no I know I was going to get to no, read it out even though the man beside me thought I was mentally ill because I handed it to him, I was like, would you want to read that? And he's <laughs> like, eh, no, you know, <laughs> I'm busy. But I, it really it was so touching, you know, sort of thing like that somebody actually went to the You have to share your poem at Women Are Speaking event. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah and it's but... going to be dis disabled access despite what the trolls are saying on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll print it out again for you, Gladys, and make sure. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, the old memory is not, you know. <laughs> so do you want to just give that a plug now uh, as an outro then, Sabina, the Women I Speaking event? Yeah, so we're going to be in Limerick on the uh, 13th of April, which is a Saturday, and we're going to be letting uh, women who have been silenced by our institutions, such as our government, political organisations and NGOs in the past, to get up and speak about particular any type of topic regarding women's issues um 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 that 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 they've they've had over the past few years, who feel silenced by this whole thing, because you are not alone. And um, there's, believe it or not, when I went to let women speak, I thought I was alone. And then when I got to speak, then I realized there were so many women cheering me. And it was just so uplifting that like, like, and the stuff that I was saying was, I was, had bottled up for 10 years, you know, and it was great, you know, mm -hmm. um, to, to actually uh, have the opportunity to speak and meet everybody here, like, because mm -hmm. it's really, yeah. You know, and I just want, and that's why I set up the women are speaking. And I have a great team behind me, which I must plug because I'm telling you, they're great women who actually did put on the women are the let women speak there in in um, September, and um, they they're they've been really great. And I'm going to be emceeing. A disabled woman will be emceeing the event in case anyone <laughs> on Twitter has any questions. You know, <laughs> so. <laughs> um yeah so um yeah it, it'll, it'll be a great event and um please come and we will have uh, we, we we will have people there uh we're we're going to have some people there who are going to be uh, disability officers first aid's going to be there and um i will have loads of stewards um so if you ever have any questions or any issues or anything like that and we're hopefully hoping that people will bring um some seats with them especially for people who have mobility issues um Stand and how can people on. get in touch with you, Sabina? Uh, we're on Women Are Speaking on uh, Twitter or X, as you call it. Um, um, and we'll put the description and the link and the information of your contact details yeah. in the description box. Yeah. And, um, well, ladies, I can definitely say the, the day that Sarah Holmes phones me definitely changed my life. I never. I that Up until that... I sat in this chair here. I was sitting exactly here. The chair was here. And um, I cried for an hour afterwards because I was alone before that. And when I met all of you, I, I'm not alone anymore. So thank you so much indeed. Wow. Thank, thank you, That's for all that you do. That's lovely. Thank you, Groshin, for bringing us together. Yeah, uh, so we, we all brought one another together in, uh, you know, that we, isn't it what wonderful how to define feminine can bring all the uh, fem, feminine warriors together. <laughs> Let's Until get next the time. warrior badge on. <laughs> <laughs> Until yeah. next time, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to Confident Women Ireland today with me, Roshan Cleric, Gladys O'Neill, Soker McLaugh uh, Nick Lachlan, uh, Catherine Monaghan, and Sabina Devine. Thank you. Until next time.